7 News at 6 starts now. We are following breaking news out of Boston. Police say they have prevented a violent attack planned on the Heinz Convention Center during the Pokemon World Championship. BPD releasing this photo showing two large firearms along with ammunition. Tonight, two suspects are under arrest, taken into custody when they were caught walking into the hind. And that's where we find 7's Kelly O'Hara with what we know so far. We are learning both the suspects traveled from Iowa and stayed at a hotel in Saugus, and that's where police caught up with them, making the arrest. 7's John Coco spoke with a woman who saw it all unfold. He joins us live from Saugus. And we are following a developing story from Plum Island, where police have made a disturbing discovery. A body washed up on Plum Island this morning. Police say a couple saw that body while walking along the beach. Medical examiners will only confirm at this time it was a woman. 7 News now turning to the weather. A dreary day in Boston. You can see it's still the same right now. No heavy rain, really, but a light, soggy mist for most of the day. The rain is moving out. The clouds might be hanging around. Hey, Brie Eggers, <laughs> kind of makes you think you're in Scotland. Yeah, it did. It felt like a European day out there. This just in following breaking news from the roads. Police in Hopkinton are on the scene of this crash on 495 South right before exit 20. Officers not releasing any information about possible injuries from this. But you can see this crash is severe and they say traffic is backing up at this hour. Drivers obviously to expect big delays. We are following more news today. Reports of explosions shaking a community in Chelsea today. Now, this turned out to be a freak occurrence, but the situation was still serious. As Seven's Chris Anderson reports on what caused the big boom that shook up that town. Three American heroes speaking together for the first time after taking down that heavily armed gunman on a Paris-bound train. They are talking about what happened as they leapt into action, taking that man down, then restraining him. It is double pandemonium at the National Zoo. Twin pandas born last night about five hours apart. And here's video of one of the tiny cubs getting its first physical exam today. It was only recently learned that Meishang was even pregnant and then twins. Great news as panda pregnancies are complicated. The veterinary team will help mama take care of them. This is the third set of twins born to giant pandas in the U.S. Congratulations. Congratulations, Mei Shang. And that is 7 News at 6. I'm Janet Wu. NBC Nightly News is next. We'll see you at 10 over on CW56. And join us right back here for 7 News at 11. 7's Janet Wu live in Cambridge with the push for the next act. Yeah, it's actually one of the biggest traditions here at Harvard. Every year, the Hasty Pudding Club, the same organization that roasts all the celebrities, stages a big show at this theater in the spring. There's a cast of 12 with half the men playing women because there are no real women on stage. And now some Harvard students are trying to change that 171-year-old tradition. This is what the outside world sees of the Hasty Pudding Club. Movie stars honored and roasted. Those coveted pudding pots, big parades, and men in drag. But only men. Tradition is such an important thing on this campus that a lot of people are afraid to approach it. While the university became co-ed, a woman has never taken the stage in a pudding production. Women can work with the hasty pudding, just not in an on-stage role. And many undergrads feel it's high time the club got with the times. So these roommates are bucking tradition by auditioning for the pudding cast this weekend. We've been overwhelmed by the amount of attention it's getting. We didn't expect it at all. When word got out, other women followed, 20 total. I have terrible stage fright, but I'm doing it for the cause. <laughs> Students say Harvard has seen plenty of change in its 379 years, and this one is just a matter of time. It's hard to break tradition, but I think that's something that'll be worth uh, worth doing. The tradition at Harvard was not to have women, and that changed. Indeed, it changed about 45 years ago. Now, we tried to reach Pudding members for comment, but my calls were not returned. Other members have said in interviews that they are seriously considering this matter. Now, the auditions for those stage roles happen this weekend. It's very competitive about the same odds of getting into Harvard itself. We'll keep you posted on those results. Reporting live from Harvard University, Janet Wu, 7 News. 
This standoff began, police say, when multiple shots were fired at the Dallas Police Department headquarters very early this morning, our time. A van was then used to ram a police car there. Police say they have now shot the man who was sitting at the wheel of that van and are searching the vehicle for explosives. Also, four suspicious bags were left outside police headquarters and one of those exploded on its own when a robot was sent in to detonate it. Here are some pictures of the damage left to Dallas Police Headquarters. You can see multiple bullet holes and shattered glass. At this point, no one has been injured. Residents in the surrounding areas who were initially evacuated are now being allowed to return to to their homes. Janet, you were there that day. We remembered your reports. I am standing almost in the exact same spot as that day almost two years ago because I was right near the medical tent, which is on Dartmouth Street right behind me. And that is one of the reasons, as you say, why so many people were saved. And in fact, every single person who was taken to a hospital was saved. Sadly, they could not save everyone, but the three who died perished here in this area. And of course, we talk about life going on. We've heard that's from so many of the victims and the survivors but even so when people come to this area to Copley Square and to the finish line on Boylston they can't help but think about what happened on that day nearly two years ago it's hard to believe that this time two years ago we had no idea what would be happening and what this city would have to face what this city would have to endure I will tell you that so far today it's been very quiet here near the finish line in part because the weather is awful it's been sleeting and snow and raining so in fact most of the people that we stopped to talk to did not know about this verdict they heard the news from us Wednesday morning a school bus like this ended up like this we heard a loud crash and I looked out this front window and I saw a yellow school bus in our driveway and figured that's not normal. <laughs> the bus had just offloaded all students at the Sullivan Middle School. It was turning left on Apricot Street when it lost control. My fiance's car was near the stone wall and it hit that and it was all the way up here against our front porch. Cameras on board show what happened. She was unbuckled basically and then when she took the left turn coming out of the school, she actually slid out of the seat there by uh, losing control of the bus. It appears that she was not wearing her seatbelt at the time and that that was a large part of the cause of the, the accident, the crash that happened. Kim was told her now totaled parked cars actually prevented that bus from going straight into the house. According to the police report, the driver sustained injuries to her hand, arm, and leg. Worcester contracts its school bus transportation through Durham School Services. The company says the driver has been put on leave pending an investigation. In Worcester, Janet Wu, 7 News. I'm in Boston now with more on this somber day of remembrance. Yes, Elizabeth, this memorial here in the Public Garden is a stark reminder how strongly Boston is linked to that tragedy. You mentioned the two planes leaving from Boston and also so many who call the state home were lost that day. And today, many, 14 years later, are stopping to remember and honor those lives. years ago today, we lost nearly 3,000 people, 206 from Massachusetts. The mayor then placed a wreath at the 9-11 memorial. The names of those lost have just been re-etched and darkened on the stone. Another wreath and a moment of silence at Logan Airport, where the two planes that crashed into the World Trade Center took off. We'll never forget. The names of all 206 victims with ties to Massachusetts were shown at the State House, along with their pictures and glimpses of the love and legacies they left behind. 
Many traditions born from 9-11 are positive, like this yearly gathering at Fenway Park. What this is all about is goodness prevailing on 9-11. After 9-11, the Red Sox organization reached out to the Red Cross, and this blood drive has been held here every year since. This year, they will exceed 10,000 people total who have donated blood. This couple met in L.A. that tragic night. Now they are married and live here. This is how they mark that anniversary. It just reminds us to get back to what's important and what's real. And that blood drive at Fenway Park lasts until 7 o'clock, so you still have just under two hours to go and do a good deed. No registration needed, just show up, because every two seconds, someone in this country needs blood. Reporting live from the Public Garden, Janet Wu, 7 News. Here are pictures of the unusual fugitive. Emus are the second largest bird in the world, and one is running around Bow, New Hampshire. That's crazy. That's funny. This is no urban legend. This video was taken by a Bow police officer. The birds can't fly, but they can kick, so people should keep their distance. I think it's very strange yeah. that something that big would be around here. Some, it's like an ostrich. With necks extended, emus can exceed six feet in height and break this posted speed limit when they sprint. Well, I'll make sure when I drive to my friend's house that I uh, look in the road and make sure I don't run over it or run into it. They are native to Australia, which begs the question, who owns this big bird? No one has come forward. Off camera, the police chief told us no one has reported a missing emu and no one has posted any signs with pictures asking for a reward. No, that's not it. There have been three sightings in this neighborhood, enough to get pictures, but not enough to capture it. In Bow, New Hampshire, Janet Wu, 7 News.